In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how molecular orbital theory contributes to aromatic molecules. And what we're going to see is this, that molecular orbital theory helps to explain why aromatic molecules are highly stable. So let me show you how this works. We were introduced to molecular orbital theory in a previous online lecture. And if you remember, it provides a certain way to think about a molecule by knowing what molecular orbitals would be filled in a given molecular orbital description. So for benzene, how do we know its molecular orbital description? Well, it's pretty easy. All you do is take benzene, and all you do is represent each carbon in the benzene ring as a molecular orbital like this. And let's bring this diagram over to the side here. These right here would be the molecular orbitals of benzene. The method I'm showing you here helps you memorize the outlay of these molecular orbitals. And remember, the outlay is important because if you remember, energy increases as you go up, which means the bottommost orbital is the lowest energy and the top orbital there is definitely the highest energy. This method I'm showing you here only works if you take the aromatic molecule and make sure one of the carbons in the ring points downward like this. I'll show you other examples soon to make sure you got this. Here's another thing that we can always do. The midpoint of the molecule, which is this red line right here, helps us know bonding molecular orbitals from anti-bonding molecular orbitals, meaning that any orbitals that are below this red line are considered bonding molecular orbitals, and any orbitals above are considered anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So here is so far our molecular orbital description. Remember, the next thing we need to do is fill in the electrons. Well, remember, benzene has six pi electrons like this. But if you remember, in molecular orbital theory, electrons are represented as half-headed arrows like this. And we also talked about how to fill in these molecular orbital charts. Remember, it follows the Aufbau principle, which means electrons fill lower energy orbitals first and work their way up towards higher energy orbitals. So for instance, one electron here we'd put in the lowest energy orbital here. Another one could be doubled up with him like this, which means the next available molecular orbitals are the ones above this orbital. So the next electron would fill here, and another one would fill here. Remember, these two orbitals here are the same level, so they're the same energy, which means we first separate the electrons. But we have two more electrons to fill, so now we double up. This one would go here, and this one would go right here. What you see here on the right now is the molecular orbital description of benzene. Notice that all of his electrons are in bonding molecular orbitals. This is why benzene is very stable. And notice for a second here how this molecular orbital description matches up with what we've been learning before. For instance, remember, to be aromatic, you needed an odd pair of pi electrons. And notice that's exactly what we have here. Notice it also matches up with Huckel's rule, which is, remember, there has to be 4n plus 2 pi electrons in order for a molecule to be aromatic. Here's where it matches up in our description. This part would be the 4n. This bottom orbital here would be the plus 2. So for instance, if n equals, let's say, 1, then 4 times 1 would be the 4 electrons right here. And then the plus 2 would be 2 electrons right here. Because remember, in the formula, 4n plus 2, 4 times 1 plus 2 is 6, which means this would be an aromatic molecule. And here's another way to understand the 4n plus 2 electron rule here. Let's say you happen to have a molecule that has this kind of molecular orbital description to it. And let's say this happens to be the midline, which would therefore make these the bonding molecular orbitals. Again, using the 4n plus 2 rule, this part of it would be the 4n, and this part would be the plus 2. And in this particular case, n could equal 2. So there'd be 4 times 2 of these electrons, or in other words, 2 sets of 4. 1 would be right here, one set of 4 that is, Another set of four would be here, and this would be the plus two. Notice all of these electrons are in bonding molecular orbitals. 
And again, using the 4n plus 2 rule with n equaling 2, 4 times 2 plus 2 is equal to 10, and that's exactly how many electrons we have here. So let's make sure you got this. If you're on an organic chemistry test, and if there's a question about a molecular orbital description for a given molecule, let me show you how to quickly generate it. Let's say the question is asking about this molecule right here. Remember, the first thing you would do is make sure that it points downward. And remember, what you would do now is turn each carbon in the ring into a molecular orbital, like this. Now, on your actual exam, you would start working with this picture right here. But in this case, let's move it over to the side so we can make sure we can see everything that's going on. Remember, again, we would also know that energy increases as you go up. And notice, your midline for this molecule is actually right here. So that means these are the bonding molecular orbitals, and these would be the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Now let's fill in our diagram here. Looking at our molecule on the left, these would be the pi electrons. And converted into molecular orbital theory picture here, we'd get this. And then now we'd fill in our chart lowest energy orbitals first. This electron would go here. This one would go here. Next available slot is here. This one would go here. This one would end up here, and this one would end up right here. So this would be the molecular orbital description of this molecule, which happens to be cyclopentyldienyl anion. Notice all of his electrons are in bonding molecular orbitals. That means he's stable, and that also means, remember, he's aromatic. Let's look at another example here. Remember, we got before that this molecule was anti-aromatic. Let's think about his molecular orbital description. So again, what we would first do is orient him so a carbon points on the downward position like this, and then convert each carbon into a molecular orbital. And let's again move it over to the side here for clarity. But notice what happens here. Our midline is this. In this particular case, we have orbitals right on the midline. When this happens, these types of orbitals are called non-bonding molecular orbitals. But the other truth remains. Anything below means that this is a bonding molecular orbital, and anything above it means this would be his anti-bonding molecular orbital. So remember, there's a distinction here between non-bonding molecular orbitals and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. They are not the same thing. So now let's fill in our chart here. These would be our pi electrons in our molecule. We have a total of four converting them to these arrows right here, and filling in, we would get one here, one here, then working our way up, one here, and now one here. Notice in this case, we have two electrons and non-bonding molecular orbitals. It's not like the other examples where all the electrons were in bonding molecular orbitals. So right away, we should suspect that this molecule shouldn't be as stable. And not only that, notice we have here an even pair of pi electrons. Remember, that meant that this molecule is anti-aromatic. So this would be the molecular orbital description of an anti-aromatic molecule. So what's it all about here? Key point. All we've learned here is that molecular orbital theory helps to explain why aromatic molecules are highly stable.